All right, take one, take one. Okay, move off, cam move off camera for a little bit. We're both gonna come in at the same time. Three, two, one, come in. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Jason with JW Classic VW and Kung Fu Gamer here. We're going to go over quite a few different things when it comes to the full flow systems because I've had people ask me not just about the mount that I was making, but more specifics on the full flow system itself. Okay, 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 guys. So we got a big jambalaya of uh, parts up here. And what I want to kind of get across is with a full flow oil system, there are a bunch of different ways you can set that up. There can be a full flow system that is just to an oil filter, a full flow system like mine with Goose that goes to the oil filter, then the oil cooler. And then there's the last option where there's a full flow system that goes through a oil thermostat that'll allow the oil to get to the right temperature. What we wanna do now is kinda of organize this all in a way that makes more sense with how that system works together in those different ways of setting it up. <laughs> These fittings right here, we'll talk about in a little bit, but we're gonna move those off to the side for right now. Yes. Right here is one of the full flow kits that you can buy. We're gonna put that up out of here in a minute. And this is the Dash 8 A&M fitting kit that you can buy for your oil lines. We'll set that up over here for a minute. These are different oil pumps, which are super important. We'll put those on this side for a second. Oil pumps, fans. And I wanted to point this out, guys, because I thought it was important that from F2 Performance Supply, you can find them on Facebook. Do me a favor, check this out to make sure it's in focus real good for these guys. Uh, yeah, it's pretty close. This was the inspiration for the oil cooler mount that I, uh, that I ended up creating. And I'll go ahead and link their Facebook uh, group down in the description below if you want to check it out. The, um, the fan is super important if you've got a big engine like Goose. And this goes Monster. with this over here and this is when you're going to set up a remote oil filter you're going to need one of these so this can go here and this is the thermostat 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 these are all thermostats oil thermostats okay so the first thing that you start off with when you're setting up your full flow oil cool, cooler system is you're going to need to either get an oil pump that has an output on it. There's a bunch of different types of oil pumps. There's one like this too, that actually has an output and an input. Different types of oil pumps. This one's from Gene Berg. It's actually a blue printed oil pump, a 30 millimeter oil pump. The other way that you get oil back into your block is through a setup like, you wanna bring it up in here? Bring the camera up this way. A setup like this where you, where you order the full flow kit and this part right here goes into your oil relief. Um, you have two oil reliefs on your block when you got a dual relief block and this will go into the front to get the oil back into the block. So guys, this is the oil pump portion of the deal. Let's go ahead and move the oil pumps off to the side over here. And from your oil pump, you'll be running into your remote oil filter. All right, so oil goes from your oil pump to your oil filter, and it'll be going into one of these right here. And this is the, the one that I have on my car, okay? And then the optional thing that you have is instead of having an, an, a thermostat that's separate because your next part would be to go into your oil thermostat. And what the thermostat does is it makes sure, makes sure that your engine is at around 165, to 180 degrees before it allows oil to flow past that thermostat into your oil cooler. And then from your oil cooler, it goes all the way back to your engine. <laughs> cool. And that is the basic idea of your full flow oil cool system. Very good. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> okay guys, a little bit of high strength contact adhesive to help hold this, these rubber isolators into place on the back of the oil cooler mount. Cool beans, about to put it up in position and start locking some stuff down. All right. Ooh. 
up underneath. So there's my oil filter, and here are the new lines. Let's go ahead and give you the panoramic view. <laughs> With a wide angle shot. There you go. The lines come over here and drop down. One of the things that I ended up doing to make room around the shock right here is I ended up having to take my brake line and route it around the back side. And then I built a little extension, fabricated a little extension for the shock tower itself. And that helped move the shock out of the way. And uh, it seems to have full movement still without the shock hitting the actual drive shaft tube here. It does go up and come back out pretty, pretty easy. It's not a total pain in the butt, but I'm gonna tell you what, it took a while to get to the not a total pain in the butt. <laughs> Let me go get my little lights and see if we can get a little bit more light up underneath here. It's starting to get a little dark underneath the car anyway when it comes to uh the battery life on them because they're a pretty cool simple idea let's see where would be a good place for this one maybe uh, i'm thinking probably up in this area too so it just shifts up first. Now this is the first time I put it on with the uh, extra little insulation on these on these bad boys right here. So I don't think it's gonna be a problem though. Oh no, that's good. And then you kind of move it over and pop it up into position. Ooh, almost there. I'm gonna watch your fingers there a little bit. You catching on something? Trying to keep this thing from just go maybe nice and easy. Nice and easy. Maybe put a little lube on it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put some grease on this plastic right here. A little bit of grease on here. Maybe it'll help it slide into position better. What do you guys think? Is that a thumbs up? Can I get a thumbs up, guys? Don't forget to comment below on the craziness that I'm doing over here. I'm sure you guys are like, Jay, I was with you until you say grease the plastic. <laughs> grease the rubber. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm going to take you away from the video for one second because if you like what you're watching, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Oh yeah, don't forget about me. Go check my channel in the link in the description, which probably will be there. I don't know. <laughs> no wax. I used to get this stuff by like the boxes of it. Whenever, God, I've had it forever too. Like my dad used to work in telecommunications and he always had extra so what do you guys think about this uh, this new location for the uh, oil cooler? Get the bugs worked out, right? Jay, you get the bugs worked out of that thing. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> That'll be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a lot better. Uh-huh, see? Then bunch up. A little bit of lube goes a long way. I'm gonna go ahead and get that one hose clamp I have that's the right size and see if I can suck that in a little bit and see what it does. See what it does. So right there is where the uh, the mount rests on top of the, uh, the horn. The, the uh, frame horn. Bang, 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 bang. And that's how this thing gets kind of laminated in position to where it doesn't move anymore. Cool. All right. All right, guys, it's time to get this strut up in here. Hopefully it's not a total pain in the butt either. I might have to go back and forth from the top to bottom to get it into place, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> it's starting to go together. I know you guys love this, and I'm probably not going to even have this crap in the video. All this fun stuff. We go on. We shoot, shoot on there. So what else?
Allen wrench is in position. That is tight. Good. And right here, the way that you guys can see that I have this little offset on here for my shock, I'm probably gonna have to bleed my brakes again too because of the having to reroute this line over. And then I gotta ask myself, was it all worth it, Jay? To be determined, guys, to be determined. That seems a little grimy. Yeah, there's some crap in there. You definitely don't want to have crap inside your fittings. It just gets in there from swapping the lines over. And if you do have a little bit of a seat, that's probably what it is. You probably need to clean off your uh, mating surfaces. You can see that I have the uh, temperature gauge switch mounted to the top of this bad boy. So it worked out pretty good. It worked out pretty good. Oh yeah. Probably want to take a look at that too, huh? And the full flow fittings. We'll take a look at those once they get here. Let's see what I think. I've never seen it, seen them before, seen those kind of fittings before, the full flow fittings, full flow 90s. Supposed to be better. Supposed to be better. So guys, this is where the full flow starts, right up at the front of the engine, at the block. Right here, you can see the main fittings that come out of one, comes out of the oil pump. The other one is a return back into the block. There's a better shot. And then my fuel pump, or oil pump, sorry, oil pump goes right into my oil filter. Out of the oil filter. Back to the cooler. comes out of the cooler. And that's where I have the temperature switch, which turns on the fan. Once it reaches, I think it's 180 degrees. It might be 160, I think it's 180 degrees. It'll switch on the fan. And you wanna have that, well, actually it doesn't really matter. Some people say before or after. As long as it's in line. I like the idea of having it after the fan though, because once the fan kicks on, it starts cooling the oil. And as soon as the oil is cooled enough, that's gonna be the point where you're gonna get that fan switched off again. Now what my oil cooler system doesn't have is a oil line block thermostat which means it's a directional thermostat that bypasses the oil cooler until the engine reaches temperature and then it lets the oil pass down to the fan in the remote oil cooler. Now this is something that I could incorporate into my engine as well. But I just haven't done it yet and it's also something you definitely want to think about if you're in a cooler climate zone where temperatures stay way below what they are down here in Texas. <laughs> All right, guys, it's back to some education. It's back to some fun. Let's talk about some fittings. Are you ready to talk about some fittings? 90s. What are you know, hard 90s? How do they add resistance to your oiling system? Let's get to work on talking about that. Yeah. What I want to talk about 
is first hard 90s. And hard 90s can be the real issue with your full flow system. The way that this works is depending on the type of hard fitting that you have. This is the one that I, one, I've only installed one on mine, is what I installed on my oil cooler. Now, I'll probably end up removing this for the full flow 90 right here that I've ordered. Now this goes from a half inch MPT to a 10 a and and then I'll be going from the 10 a and down to the 8 a and that I have in my system. But with this one, the reason why I'm gonna go ahead and stick with it is let's zoom in for a second. You saw it, you'll see it in the video coming soon that when I tapped it, this is a pretty big opening on this fitting. Compare this to this other 90, this, this other drilled hard 90, and you can see a dramatic difference in the openings on this thing. Like, holy smokes, right? So I don't think I'm gonna have such an issue with this fitting. Now, with this one, like I told you, it's trash. I don't like it. So we bypassed it, and got rid of it, and tapped this fitting for the thermostatic switch. Coming back over to the board now, guys. So, like I said, one of the things that you're gonna, that you won't notice really, with your full flow system is your pressure will kind of be the same, but you won't see is the flow or the volume of movement of your oil. So this is where these hard 90s, these drilled hard 90s can become a serious obstruction and cause some turbulence in your oiling system. So let's say like for instance, this fitting right here is being used. It's like it adds like 45 to 50 straight line oil line of resistance. That can be quite a bit if you're oil system doesn't have the right pump to push that kind of oil. And if you have too many of these, so let's say if you add like four or five of these 90s to your system, that could be a big deal, man. If you have this many 90s in your system, are you having problems with your oil pressure or your engine getting too hot? Might be the problem, guys. Do me a favor, hit me up in the comments below if you've got some problems like that. Or if you know more about this oil uh, dynamics, pretty cool stuff, man, pretty cool stuff. This one right here, this fitting, this is the 90 that comes in the kit and is considered the next best, best uh, type of fitting to have if you don't have a full flow fitting running. So after that comes this fitting, this brass fitting. And that's basically because the amount of volume and movement that can happen inside of this bad boy, guys. So if I end up having issues, this fitting will get replaced. And then I'll end up going with something like this uh, thermostat right here and uh, switch my fan uh, we'll work that out then <laughs> but as with anything custom or anything that you're fabricating you're kind of figuring out as you're going there's a lot of guidance out there and information I'm gonna go ahead and provide some links to some guidance on fluid dynamics when it comes to stuff like these 90s down in the description below guys Okay, okay, okay guys that is gonna do it for tonight we got that oil cooler mount the new one installed did some modifications to it you guys did see that i'm going to go ahead and upload the new modification so if you guys want to build your own oil cooler mount like mine they'll be on the facebook group so don't forget to join the facebook group right kung fu gamer yeah go do that join the facebook group now <laughs> <laughs> guys i really appreciate all of you i got way more subscribers than i thought i'd ever have with this channel it's awesome Hope you enjoy this content. Full flow systems can be kind of complicated sometimes, but if you just sit down and kind of plan it out and think about it, you got no problems. Fabrication, let me tell you, fabrication stuff. Oh. <laughs> Fabrications are great once you get done, everything's installed and it's working. Still gotta fire up the engine, hook up some electrical stuff, but we are there, it fits, everything looks great. Loving it. Can't wait till next time, guys. We're gonna do some beam work. Yeah, some beam work. We got it all narrowed up. Got the bearings almost all the way in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, guys, this is Jason from JW Classic VW and Kung Fu Gamer. See you guys next time. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>